to hear you today. Holy Spirit, just have your way. We ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen, amen. Come on, let's give Jesus one more big praise today. While we're still in an attitude of prayer, let's, let's lift up Sharon Belcher. Uh, Sister Sharon's in the hospital and went in for one thing, and they found some other things, and so we want to be praying for her. Also, Amber, Fran Amber Francis lost her grandfather. Uh, he went home to be with the Lord this week. So would you pray for that family? Can we just lift them up real quick? Father God, we just lift up Sharon to you. God, we pray that you would be with her, that you'd help her. God, that you would just bring healing to her body, give wisdom to the doctors, and uh, just encourage her right there in the hospital. Lord, would you just be with her? And God, we just pray for Amber Francis and all of her family. God, that you would bring comfort and uh, just, just a peace that passes understanding. Lord, as this family goes through this loss, God, that you would just walk with them through this. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Uh, how many of you came out to the revival this week? If you did, just lift your hand. Hi. Um, listen, I just want to. I just want to say thank you all that that supported it. Those who came and served, uh, whether it was helping set up or tear down chairs or parking cars or security team sound and and uh, lights and video and uh, counselors and just just so many of you that it took so many. And I just want you to know that y'all made me proud this week in a good way, pride in a good way. I mean, Brandon just talked about pride, but this was a good kind of pride like a father has for his kids. And because so, uh, you know, Benny Tate made a statement this week. He said that great pastors don't make great churches. He said great churches make great pastors. And I thought, you know what, y'all made me look really good this week. And uh, and just got so many compliments, just like, man, you, you know, people of Christ Tabernacle are amazing, and, and, uh, and all I could say was, I know, you know, they're, they're really good, and so I just want you to know, I love you, appreciate you so much, and I thought, I thought this week was a big win uh, for the church, I really do, and, uh, and, and I just, I, I thought that, um, that we need to learn to celebrate the wins, you know, and when they come, we celebrate them, and, um, and I thought it was a win because, listen, as we, and Brandon hit on this, is, is we got past our preferences, we got past personalities, and we laid down our pride. And um, that's what I want to talk about today, preferences, personalities, and pride. So you can go ahead and start heading toward Acts chapter 10. And God actually gave me that earlier in the week. And then as I began to prepare my message, I thought, wow, this, this is just perfect uh, time. God has great timing. Uh, but here's why I believe this week was a win. Number one, uh, that I know of, at least 22 people got saved this week. So that's good. Uh, people that were far from God came back to God. Um, many of the churches were, were, were encouraged pastors that, listen, 2020 was one of the hardest years, the hardest year that I know of that pastors ever went through and, and they all left encouraged and let's pray for their churches this morning that, that they don't take all the wind out of their sails as soon as they get there. But, um, but listen, Jesus was glorified this week and, and I really think that, um, that the father was really happy. And, you know, I'm a father. I got three kids. Two of them are out of the house. One of them is, is still there. And I can just tell you, when, when all the family comes together and everybody's in the house and there's no fighting going on, come on, there's no arguing and everybody's happy, don't you know that makes a father happy? And, and to, sit, to see this week, you know, every Sunday we all separate. We go our different ways. But for one week, we lay down our preferences and our personalities and our pride and we came together and for a father to look down and say wow look at all my my kids together they're not fighting not fussing just worshiping me listen that's a win everybody and that that uh, it's been a long time coming so so yeah let's give Jesus a big praise for that and I think it's important that we not only celebrate the win but we need to look back and say why um why we had a win um, you know, how did it happen? Why did it happen? It didn't just happen. There were some things that happened that allowed the win. Um, I remember being at Cracker Barrel uh, one time. How many of y'all love you some Cracker Barrel? All right, all right. And I don't, I don't think these things are there. I don't think they survived COVID, but remember the little wood triangle things with all the golf pegs in it? Yeah. And, uh, and, and every time I'd go to Cracker Barrel, I guess they figured it wouldn't. I don't, do they still have those? I think they, do they, are they there for real? I figured COVID was just like, 
it's probably not wise, but anyway, if you really think about it. But anyway, every time I'd sit down, I'd start playing. And most of the time, I was an ignoramus. Any, any ignoramuses out there? How many of you are just plain dumb? You know what I'm talking about? It's, it's got these little things. But there was one time, and, and I'm embarrassed to tell you, I only remember one time that I'm there, and I'm just talking, we're going through. And all of a sudden, I get down to like four pegs, and I'm like, I'm going to win this thing. And I actually got to one peg, everybody. I mean, um, the only problem is I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. And I have no idea. I have no idea how I did it. And, and, and I don't remember doing it since then. I'm sure I could go on YouTube and figure it out. But that's for wimps, right? And so, <laughs> but I believe the reason we saw God move this week was because we laid down our preferences. We got over our personalities. And we dealt with our our pride. And because of this, we, got, we saw God move um, by his presence in a special way, which tells us that's a formula that if we will even go further. And Brandon, he didn't know what I was preaching on today, but he, he kind of set it up for me. He set the ball on the tee. Like, if you can't hit that one, Troy, then uh, you're, you're really messed up. But, but he, he showed us that, listen, we've begun the process and we saw a little bit of what God can do. But if we will just go further in this process and understand why we won and continue to go further in, down that path, then we can even see a greater move of God's presence. And so that's what happens in Acts chapter 10. Uh, for those of you visiting, we welcome you today. We've been going through the book of Acts week by week and going through the chapters and we've made it all the way to chapter 10, the end of chapter 9, uh, the, the, God, the, the book of Acts, it shifts from Paul. We've been studying about Paul that goes back to Peter and, um, and Paul kind of gets run out of town. So he's kind of on the backside of the desert right now, but the, the focus shifts back on Peter and his ministry. And at the end of chapter nine, he heals somebody and then he raises a lady from the dead and then, and uh, he's, he's doing really good. And so in Acts chapter 10, God shifts now. And because up to now, the gospel has gone only to Jewish people or people that had some kind of connection to the Jews. The Samaritans were different, but they still had a connection to the Jews. And, and now God is wanting to take the gospel. Remember, Jesus said, I want everybody to be saved. God so loved who? The whole world. That whoever would believe, right? And so God's heart is for the whole world. But for the first nine chapters of the book of Acts, the only people that have gotten saved are Jews. And so Jesus is like, enough's enough. Um, you guys are going to have to get past your preferences. You're going to have to get past personalities. You're going to have to lay down your pride. I've got a whole bunch of people that hadn't been saved yet. And so, by the way, if you're, if you're not familiar with these terms, Jew and Gentile, um, God kind of separates them in two categories. You're either Jewish or if you're not Jewish, you're a Gentile. So most of us here today are probably Gentiles that we're not just meaning we're not Jewish. And in the Old Testament, God dealt really specifically with the Jewish people, but he always loved everybody. In fact, the book of Jonah, if you've ever noticed that book, that was when God sent a prophet to a non-Jewish city, and he said, I want them to be saved. And if you remember, Jonah didn't want to go. Y'all heard the story about Jonah and the whale? It was the reason he ended up in a whale is because he didn't want to go to those people. He didn't think they were worthy of getting saved, right? And so God had to get him past his preferences and past his pride, and he never really got over it. He just did it because he didn't want to be in a, in a well, everybody. So, um, but we, we see a situation kind of like that here where God is wanting to go to the Gentiles, but Peter really doesn't want to go, and he has to get over some stuff. So let's look at Acts chapter 10, verse 1, and it introduces us to this guy named Cornelius, and he's the Gentile, the guy who's, who's not Jewish, and it says there's a certain man in Caesarea named Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian regiment. He's a devout man, one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people. He prayed to God always. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius. And when he observed him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? Let's, let's just stop for a minute. Now, look at this guy. Um, it says that he... He was a centurion, which just meant he was a very prominent man. He had influence. He had 100 people under him. He's, this, he's in the Roman army. He's in this Italian guy. He fears God. 
Notice the big G. He's, he, he fears the God of heaven. He's a devout man. He, he has all of his household fears God. You know, he's going to church. He gives general, generously to people. He gives to the poor. He's, later on, we learn he was given to the church. He's a man of prayer. Come on, I'm just telling you as a pastor, there's not a pastor on the planet that wouldn't want this guy in their church. In fact, most churches would make him a deacon. I mean, he's, he's faithful, his family comes, he's a giver, he's generous. I mean, he, he prays, he fears God. I mean, that's pretty good. There's only one problem. He's not saved. See, you can go to church, you can pray, you can give, you can, you can fear God, you can do all those things. But listen, there's only one way to be saved, and that's through faith in Jesus Christ. And he, hadn't, he didn't know that yet. But look at the great lengths that God went to to get him the message. He actually sends an, an angel to him to get this to it. And so even though he was a good man, there was still something he needed to do to become a righteous man. See, there's a lot of us that we, we look at ourselves and we want to compare ourselves to somebody else. Well, I've never killed anybody or I've never, never, never robbed anybody or I've never stolen. And so we're comparing ourselves to other people. But the Bible says in order to get to heaven, you have to be righteous. And the only problem with that is the Bible also says that nobody's righteous. There was only one who was righteous and his name was Jesus. Right? And so he came and he lived the life that we couldn't and then went to a cross and took our punishment dying the death that we should have. And notice what Ephesians 2 says. He says that, that it's by grace that we're saved. Through faith, that not of yourselves, it's the what? It's the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And so, listen, Cornelius, as good as he was, everybody that knew Cornelius would say, man, he sure is a good man. Man, that guy prays. He gives. He gave me $100 this week. I mean, he loves kids. He fears God. Look at his kids. I mean, they're looking at his pictures on Facebook. He's got the most beautiful family, right? He's the best giver in the church, but he's lost his last year's Easter egg. I mean, he's lost. And, and what the Bible says is that the only way we're saved is through, through grace. In other words, it's God's gift, but we're created in Christ Jesus for good works, so once we get saved, it's still good to pray, it's still good to give, it's still go to church, but those things won't save us. And so, so Cornelius is a good man, but he's a lost man. And so we, we read on, the angel speaks to him some more here in Acts 10.4, and he says to him, your prayers and your alms have come up as a memorial before God. I mean, look at the power of prayer. Even though this man was lost, God was hearing his prayer, and he saw what he was doing. And I just want you to know that you, you know, when you pray, you may not see the results of your prayers today, but every prayer that you pray, God takes note of. And he's just waiting to the right time. He's, he'll, he'll move on your behalf. And he tells Cornelius, he says, the angel tells him, he says, I want you to send men to Joppa and send for Simon, whose name is Peter. He's lodging with another guy named Simon, who's a tanner, whose house is by the sea, and he'll tell you what you must do. Isn't that interesting that, you know, here there's an angel that is speaking to Cornelius, and he could have told him how to be saved, couldn't he? He could have told him all about Jesus, but instead, he, God, again, chooses to work through infallible, imperfect people like Peter. And so, so Cornelius sends some of his people to go get Peter. Jump down to verse 9. It says, the next day as they went on their journey and they drew near the city... Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. That would be 12 o'clock. It would be noontime, lunchtime. And then he became very hungry, and he wanted to eat. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance, and he saw heaven opened. Notice what happens when you pray. Listen, it's important to pray. It's important to make room for God. Uh, I, I think there's a lot of times God wants to speak but we don't take time to stop throughout the day and just to hear what God has to say. And so we need to make it a habit of prayer. And so he he's makes room for God while he's waiting, he's praying. Heaven opens up. An object like a great sheet 
bound at the four corners, descending to him, let down to the earth, and all kinds, and he looks inside the sheet, if you can picture this, and there's all kinds of animals. There's wild animals, wild beasts, creeping things, which would be like reptiles and birds of the air, and this voice from heaven says to Peter, rise and eat. Now, what you have to remember is Peter's a good Jewish fellow, and, and they have a lot of restrictions about, about what they can eat and can't eat. And everything that was on that sheet was stuff that he couldn't eat. And he said, Lord, I, notice what he says, no. Now, this God's speaking to him, and he says, not so. I can't. God, I, I can do many things for love, but I can't do that, right? I mean, that was just, Lord, you've crossed the line right there. I think Meatloaf sang that, but... Uh, <laughs> So, so he said, took you back. I mean, I just went back to the 80s. It just happens every now and then. It wasn't in the notes. But, in, but Peter said, not so, Lord. I've never eaten anything common or unclean. And notice what the Lord says to him in, in verse 15. A voice spoke to him again the second time and says, what God has cleansed, you better not call common. And this was done three times. In other words, even the second time he didn't listen. God had to, in other words, Peter was really stubborn. Um, and, and it was this, this moment where Peter was praying, but he didn't like the answer he was getting. And, he, and here's the thing we have to realize that a lot of times we think prayer is about us getting our will done in heaven. But prayer is really about God getting his will done in us. And so when we pray, we're making room for God that we find out, God, what is your will? Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. And this, this struck me as I was studying this this week. I don't think I've ever really put it together before. I've read this passage so many times. But, you know, it says that he was, it was lunchtime and he was hungry. And while he's praying, they're preparing the food, right? He's hungry. It's lunchtime, and he says, I've got a little time. They're preparing the food. I'll go up and pray. Maybe he's up on the roof, and he's just like, oh, Lord, thank you for this food. And while they're preparing the food, he's starting to smell some lamb roasting. Come on. Y'all like to smell the grill? Your neighbor's out there grilling next door and got the, got the smell of meat cooking and maybe some bread, bacon. And he's smelling the bread, and he's like, oh, thank you, Lord. About to get me some food. And all of a sudden, he's like, you want some food? Here you go. And the Lord gives him this vision of all these things. And he says, he says, you want to eat? Eat. But here's the thing about Jesus. So often when he would give a, an illustration, you remember this, when Jesus was on earth and he would teach his disciples, so often what he was talking about wasn't what he was talking about. And, and when he was telling him to rise and eat, Peter thinks he's talking about the animals. And what God is really saying is, listen, you're, there's a whole group of people that you see as unclean or, or common. And I want to tell you that my blood cleansed them. And don't you look at them as uncommon or unclean because I paid a great price for them. And I, I want you to go to them. And you're going to have to get past your preferences and your pride to do this. And Peter's thinking he's talking about food, and Jesus is saying, listen, I've got a food. Remember when Jesus went to the Samaritan woman? And, and Jesus, and again, the Samaritans, if you don't know this, they were another group of people. They were, they were half Jew, and because of that, they were despised. And, and the Jews hated the Samaritans. They would walk around Samaria so they wouldn't have to go through there. And when Jesus was on the earth, he said, I've got to go to Samaria. Come on, guys. And so the disciples went with him, but they didn't really want to go. And so when they get there, Jesus is wanting to do the ministry, but it said they were hungry. All they could think about was food. And so they're like, Jesus, we're really hungry. And he's like, just go eat. Just, just go. And so they come back. They go buy food. They come back, and he's talking to this woman, this Samaritan woman, who's been married multiple times, like five times, I think, if I remember right. Now she's living with somebody she's not married to. Jesus is ministering to her. She gets saved. And the disciples come back, and they got their groceries, you know, they got their Walmart bags, and they're like, hey, Jesus, you hungry? And he said, no, I'm not hungry. And they're like, who? Jesus ate without us. And Jesus said this. He said, I've got food that you don't even know about. He said, I've been being fed this whole time because my food is ministering to this woman right here. What feeds me is, is, is not the burgers. What feeds me is, is seeing this life changed. 
And he said, my food is to do the will of the Father who sent me. And then that's what he begins to speak that to him in John 4. Notice what he said. He, says, he said, you guys think that, oh, the, the harvest is going to come one day. We still got four months, and then the harvest will come. And Jesus said, quit waiting. Open your eyes and look. He said, the, the fields are already ripe for the harvest. In other words, you think that one day God's going to save those people. And Jesus is saying, look. She just got saved. Listen, it's not about tomorrow. It's about what God's doing right now. And, and he's, again, when we go back to the book of Acts, he's, he's trying to get a hold of Peter's heart again. It says, Peter, listen, it's time. But you got to get past your preferences. You got to get past some prejudices. You got to get over your pride because there's some people that I want to reach. See, God was changing directions, and Peter wasn't really ready for the ride. You know, in the Old Testament, God would move, and you know, the people, they'd follow God, but there was a cloud in the sky and a pillar of fire by night. How many of y'all would like that? Like, God, just give me a cloud. When you move, when I see that cloud move, I'll move. Yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? When Jesus came to earth, he had his disciples, and Jesus would get up in the morning, he'd go pray, and then when he'd come down from prayer, he'd say, okay, guys, let's go. And they'd say, where are we going? He'd say, you just follow me, and you go where I go. And when he moved, they moved. But when Jesus went back to heaven, he didn't send a cloud. He didn't send fire. He sent the Holy Spirit. And so now he's given all of us the Holy Spirit. And so now we have to learn to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And, and so notice what happens, verse 19, when as Peter was thinking about the vision, notice what it says, the Spirit said. The Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, go down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. And listen, Peter had been paralyzed by his preferences. You know, our preferences will paralyze us sometimes. And, and let's get real, we all have preferences. You know, even this week, there was a lot of preferences that we had to get over. Let me just do a little poll. How many of you like Southern gospel music? Would you just lift your hand? All right, come on, be proud about it. If you're going to like it, go ahead and lift your hands up real high. How many of you got some Gaither videos at home? Come on, got some Gaither. Got, yeah, my mom and dad had a whole shelf. I grew up on that. Um, and how many of you like some K-Love, some praise and worship? Come on, all right. Which is better? You know, some of y'all are like, I like that Gaither. And so Friday night, and it was like this all week, Friday night, man, it's time. It's about five minutes till, and they got a Gaither video going. It's, you know, you know everybody, woo. And then, the, man, those of my generation and older were like, this is what it's about right here. The whole, every night, all of the music should be just like this. And then some young worship leader gets up there with, with, with blue jeans and a T-shirt and, and a guitar, and he starts playing stuff like we play here. And y'all are like, oh, here they go again with their, <laughs> with their music. But how many of you know that's just preference? It's just preference. It's just, and we all have preferences that we like one better than we like other, and, and, and we all feel, and I had to get over that. I mean, listen, I'll be honest with you. I, there was times that I walked in, and I, and I was like, why are they playing that? And I won't tell you which one they were playing, but I was like, why are they playing that? And why don't we play this? I think, it, I think it'd be better if we played this or we did it this way. But listen, I had to get past my preferences this week if we were going to have unity. In preference, it can be, you know, how somebody dresses or, or the style of preaching. Oh, I like that guy Wednesday because he got loud when he preached. Come on, somebody. You know, and y'all were like, oh, now, that, now he's preaching. <laughs> Why can't Pastor Troy do that? You know, and it was like, now that was a preacher. And then, and then the other guys are like, now I like that guy who was more soft. And, and, but listen, or, or the length of service. Oh, that worship team, they went way too long. That was just too long. <laughs> brother Ken, he preached for an hour and a half. Did you, I kept track. I was like, good night, Brother Ken. I'm just like, he better not do that when he comes here. That's what I mean. I'm just, I'm just being real. And, but listen, how many know that's preference? Because in the Bible, Paul preached till midnight. Kid fell out of the window and fell asleep. You know, he went and raised him from the dead and went back and preached some more. You know, so it's, it's. It's just preference, but we can, our preference can become something that turns to prejudice, and then we begin to look down on people who don't like it the way that we, we do it, and then it, that's when it turns to pride, thinking that our way is the only way. 
or that our way is the better way, but instead we need to embrace our differences because and, and, and seek together to work together in unity. And so a lot of that happened this week, and so I just, I just think it's a big win. And um, because around the throne of God, you know that there's every tribe, every tongue, every nation, and, um, and the denominational distinctions will be forgotten forever, hallelujah, amen. And we'll be singing new songs, right? We're not going to be singing old songs. The Bible says we'll be singing new songs. So give it up for the new songs, right? So um, learned a new one this week. That was a good song, by the way. I like that new one we learned. Um, listen, the only thing I thought was lacking this week is we got to do a better job at breaking the race lines. You know, we got we to gotta be intentional about that. I went out to Dotson Days yesterday and got to meet Pastor Carl Copeland. And, and listen, they've got a, I wish I could go. They've got a worship service at Dotson Park today at 1115. Y'all could actually go if you wanted to. You could go out there and worship with them. But I'm going to be more intentional at breaking. Let's, let's keep breaking walls. Come on, let's break. You know, so all God's people can be together. So look at verse 19. While Peter thought about the vision... The Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are seeking you. Arise and go down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I've sent them. And then Peter went down to the men who had been sent to him from Cornelius and said, Yes, I am he who you seek. For what reason have you come? And they said, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man, one who fears God and has a good reputation among the nation of the Jews, was divinely instructed by a holy angel to summon you to his house and to hear words from you. Then he invited them in and lodged them. Oh, my goodness, these Gentiles are in the house, everybody. This is, this is breaking down walls. And then it says, On the next day, Peter went away with them, and some brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And here's what you need to see is that ultimately Peter went with them, not because he really understood what God was doing or even agreed with what God was doing, but because he was submitted. Listen, we need to learn to obey the Lord, not because we understand or because we feel like it, but because he said so. Right? Just because he said so. See, Peter wasn't near as holy as we make him out to be sometime. He wasn't near that holy because he really wasn't thinking like God. He was just obedient to God. And sometimes we put these people on a pedestal that are in the Bible Uh, And we get this idea that they walked in the spirit 24-7, but they didn't. In fact, they were constantly battling their flesh. You know, even after this experience where where, where God shows him the sheet and ultimately he's going to go preach to Cornelius and he's going to get saved. Listen, even after that, there was a moment where he started getting more comfortable hanging out with the Gentiles. Paul talks about this in Galatians. And then so he's actually eating with the Gentiles. And so, and he got over the food thing. Aren't you glad God made all food clean? How many of y'all like a good pork chop every now and then or some barbecue ribs? (laughs) Jesus said, it's all good. And so Peter, you know, here he is eating with some Gentiles. And he's like, man, I didn't know I was missing out. Hand me another pork chop, brother. And so Peter's eating. Then all of a sudden, some Jews from Jerusalem show up. And Peter sees him coming, and he gets up real quick, and he gets away from the table, and he kind of walks away. And and what's funny is in Galatians, Paul calls him out. And and Paul's like, you know, you hypocrite. He said, you're acting one way this time. Any of y'all ever have a friend that y'all were good when y'all was just them, and then then the rest of the group shows up, and they kind of shun you a little bit? And that's what happened there. They were... It was this, there was this prejudice and there was still, Peter still had a whole lot of prejudice in him and Paul called him out. See, Peter didn't go because he loved the Gentiles. Peter Peter went because he loved God. And we have to learn to do what God wants us to do even when we don't feel it. And then here's the deal. Eventually, he will change your heart. I remember years ago, long time ago, um, probably 13 years ago, I went on my first mission trip to Mexico and And I didn't go because I had a love for the Hispanic community or the Mexican people. I I didn't. I just went because I felt like God wanted me to go. And so so I went on this trip. I wasn't excited about it. I heard about the dangers of the cartels. I mean, I'd heard about the water. How many know you don't drink the water? And, And I'd heard about the people getting sick from the food. And I was worried about the language barrier. I had two years of Spanish in high school. And all I remember is I 
agua and baño. I mean, that's it. And, and after two years, so I knew this is not good. But I went out of obedience. And while I was there serving the people, working with the people, I fell in love with the people. See, I went out of obedience, not out of love. But I'm just telling you, when you begin to worship, it, that's what happened this week. I didn't dislike the people, but I can't say that I really loved them all that much. But, but as we're serving together and we're worshiping together and we're praying for one another, all of a sudden my heart began to grow for these different pastors and these different churches and, and, and for, for these other people. And listen, my life is better because we went out of obedience and then God dealt with our heart. You know, it's um, when, when we, we, we look on, we have to realize that Peter wasn't perfect. He was just obedient. And a lot of times perfectionism is an enemy to fulfilling God's will. If we wait for everything to be perfect, we'll never see God do anything. We just have to move forward. You know, with this tent revival, I'll just be honest, so many things could have gone wrong. Um, first of all, the weather. How about the weather this week? Can we give God praise? That's like top 10 miracles. Um, if you enjoyed the weather this week, you're welcome. It was, uh, <laughs> I mean, you look back a week, it was 90 to 100. You look going into next week, it's 90 to 100. And then we decided to do a tent riot revival first week of August, and it's like 80, 70s at night. Come on. Lord still does miracles. But there were so many things that could have gone wrong. But it was getting past some things. But and we just had to move, not knowing how God would, but we had to get past being paralyzed with all the things that might go wrong. So look at verse 24, and it says, The following day they entered Caesarea. So now Peter is going with these guys. He's going to Cornelius' house, and Cornelius is waiting for them. And he called together his relatives and his close friends. So here's a guy, he's not even saved yet. He knows that the preacher is coming and he calls his whole family together to come hear the message. He's an evangelist and he's not even saved yet. Can I just tell you, we got a great opportunity. Next week, Ken Freeman's gonna be here. He's an evangelist. He's the best, one of the best I've ever seen at seeing lost people get saved. Now, some of y'all may be here. God had to deal with me about this too. Some of y'all thinking, I already know, I've heard his message. Some of y'all have heard it twice, three times, and you're thinking, oh, Ken's coming. I know, I've already heard his testimony. Guess what? I promise, I just, I make you a promise. If next week you bring a lost friend, you will hope he gives his testimony. You'll be sitting there like, oh, I hope he tells that one part, right? If you come by yourself, you're going to be like, oh, I've heard that before. Listen, we have to start thinking about getting past our preferences and saying, listen, let's get Ken here and let's get as many lost people as we can to hear the message about Jesus so more lives will be changed. Amen? And so as notice this, as Peter's coming in, Cornelius met him and fell, fell down at his feet and what? Worshipped him. <laughs> but Peter lifted him up saying, stand up, I myself am also a man. You know, when Peter, when Peter arrived, Cornelius is so excited and he just, he just falls down. He starts worshiping Peter and thankfully Peter's smart enough to say, man, get up. You're going to get us both in trouble. Come on, come on, get up. Because remember that we, we can't get caught up in personalities. Don't get caught up in personalities. And thankfully, Peter didn't let that happen. Because remember this, the best of men are men at best. Don't get caught up in personalities. I grew up in a, cur a culture where people elevated the preacher way higher than what he should be. And, um, and if you live through the 80s, we saw a lot of prominent preachers fall really far. And a lot of scandals, and there was a lot of hurt people in the church, and 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 it brought us back to the reality. Listen, they're just they're just guys. I'm just telling you, I am one, and I'm just telling you, we're just guys. And and just as God's called you to do things, He's called us to do things. But but God has chosen to work through imperfect people. And what I love about this week, we had six six different preachers, all sharing the same gospel, preaching from the same Bible. Totally different personalities. And, and honestly, I was worried at the, before this started. I thought, you know what? Some people are going to come out for Johnny Hunt, but they not, might not come out because they never heard that guy. Or, you know, and it might be 1,000 one night and 200 the next. Listen, I want you to know every night, 
the tent was like full. And they're like, who is this guy talking again? Nobody cared because it wasn't about personality. We, we did it, everybody. We got past personalities, and we just said, we're just here to worship Jesus. And, and it was, and we, you have to get past the cult of personality. In fact, Paul said that in Corinthians. He said that the cult of personality is a sign of carnality. And Paul had to deal with this with the church, and, and, and he said this in 1 Corinthians 3. He said, listen, there's envy and strife, and there's divisions among you. And he said, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? For when one of you says, I'm of Paul, or another of, I'm of Apollos, he said, are you not carnal? When, when we go around saying, oh, I'm a Johnny Hunt man, or I'm, a, I'm an Al Toledo man, or I'm a Jeff LeBorg man, you know, he, he says, listen, are you not carnal? When we say, listen, I'm a Methodist or I'm a Baptist or I'm a Pentecostal or whatever, he said, isn't that, those, that's just man-made labels. And he goes on to the next verse and he says, who is Paul? Now, this is the greatest apostle, greatest Christian who ever lived. And he's the one speaking. He says, he said, who am I? And who's the other preacher, Apollos? He said, we're just ministers through whom you believed as the Lord gave to each one. And that's what Peter knew. When this guy started worshiping, he's like, get up, get up, man. I'm just, I'm just a man. I'm just the minister to bring the message. Don't make a big deal about me. You make a big deal about Jesus. Because I can fail you, but he'll never fail you. And he said, I, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Here, here's the thing. And what Paul was saying is like, we have different personalities. We have different gifts. And... Um, and this week, you know, we had an AG, an Assembly of God preacher, some Baptist preachers, a Congregational Methodist, and who knows what Ken Freeman is. You know, it, it's, uh, <laughs> he's in a, a class of his own. But we don't worship people, but we learn to appreciate people and their different personalities. Listen, we don't elevate personalities. We appreciate personalities. You know, Paul was a planter. Apollos was a teacher. You know, what's one thing about growth track? We'll help you discover your personality <clears throat> and how God wired you, how he shaped you, but also we'll help you to appreciate other people's personalities. You know, Paul was bold. That's why he was always getting beat up. If you hung out with Paul, most likely you're going to end up in jail. Like, I don't know if I like his personality. He's so bold. And, I mean, we just read in Galatians, he's throwing, he's throwing Barnabas under the bus. He's throwing Peter under the bus. I mean, he's bold. Um. But that same personality is what gave him courage to, to take the gospel to places it had never been before. I, I, I'll just tell you this right now. Me and Brother Harold Riley have completely different personalities. How many of you know Harold, Brother Harold? I remember the first time I met that guy. Majestic house. We're supposed to meet for lunch, and he comes in. If you all know me, I'm pretty quiet. I mean, this is about it for me. And, you know, I'm just talking. I talk like normal people, right? And we're just sitting here at the table. <laughs> all of a sudden... Harold Riley comes in, sits down at the table, and we start talking, and everybody in the restaurant heard the conversation. I'm like, bro, bring it down a notch. But he, that's just him. He's wide open, loud, all bold. But can I just tell you something? I, I have learned that boldness can turn some people off, but I'm so, let me just tell you, that same boldness is the one that had the faith to believe that God would do it, Amen. that God could do it. And, and when we were planning, I'm just telling you, there was, about, there was about 20 of us pastors in the room, and we're there, and, and they start talking about tent revival, first week of August. Now, listen, I'm the voice of reason in the room, everybody. I want you, I'm a man of, I want to show you how much faith I have. I, I was like, and I was like, guys, uh, you know, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, and I hadn't been to many tent revivals, but first week of August in Kentucky, I just, I mean, what would y'all say? I'm just like, doesn't sound like a good idea. And Harold's like, don't worry about it, brother. God will take care of it. I'm like, and he did. And he did. See, that same boldness is that personality, but there's, there's, it's backed by faith. That, and then we start talking about how much is it going to cost. He's like, don't worry about it. God will take care of it. You know, before the revival was even over, it was paid for. You know, thousands and thousands of dollars that God. And, and listen, we have to learn to appreciate personalities, but not elevate them too high so let's get back to our story verse 27 as he's talking to him he went in and he found many who'd come together and he said to them you know how unlawful it is for a jewish man to keep company with or go to one of another nation notice that i mean peter starts out that way he said you know it's not right for me to be here 
You know, we, Baptists and Methodists, Pentecostals, we're not supposed to all be under the same tent together. You know that's not right. But, but God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore, I came without objection as soon as I was sent for. I asked them, for what reason have you sent me? And then he begins to preach to them about Jesus. And he gives them the gospel. And this is one of the best gospel presentations you will ever see from verse 38 to 43. He tells him how Jesus came and went about doing good and then and healing and, and delivering. And, and then he went to a cross and he died and he was raised from the dead. And, and that, he, that they saw him, they were witnesses for that. That he commanded them to go and preach to, the, to, to everybody, Jews, Gentiles. And then he says this in verse 43. He says, to him, all the prophets talked about through his name, whoever would believe in him will receive forgiveness of their sins. And what's amazing, and I want to show you how God works through imperfect people. people. Peter's not even done preaching yet. He's wanting to go another hour, and God just like, enough is enough. I want to save these people. And he just right out of heaven, he just fills them with the Spirit right there on the spot. Before Peter's, it says, while he was still speaking, Look at verse 44. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon him. God is like, I've waited. I've waited long enough. I, I want to see him saved. Shut up, Peter. I'm coming down. It, it was, and he filled him right there. And those who were with Peter, the Jews, were astonished because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles as well. Look at verse 46. For they heard them speak with tongues. And magnify God. And Peter's just like, wow, they've got what we've got, fellas. He said, I think we need to baptize these people. Listen, the first step after you get saved is to get baptized. We've got a couple people getting baptized the uh, second service. You just got saved. I know we've got some people here today just got right with God, just, just got saved. Listen, next step is water baptism. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord, and they asked him to stay a few days. Listen, <clears throat> when we get past our preferences and we can get past personalities and we can lay down our pride, look at what God can do. We pour out a spirit. And what you experienced this week, Becky, you can come. What we experienced this week was just the tip of the iceberg, as Brandon said. It's just a taste of what God wants to do. And I hope it whetted your appetite for what for more. It's, it's, let's, let's not let it die, but let's build on it and say, come on, we've seen what, what can happen when we, when we lay some things aside, when we lay down our, our preference and don't get caught up in personalities and we, and we continue to lay down our pride. Listen, God wants to move and he will move and he wants to save people. He wants to fill people with the Holy Spirit. And, and when that happens, there's nothing that our God can't do. Amen. Come on, why don't you stand to your feet this morning? Listen, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus, you can be like, you can be like Cornelius. Maybe that spoke to you. You can be a good person. You can, you can point to all these great things that you've done in your life, but if you don't, if you've never surrendered to Jesus, then you can be good but not going to heaven. And just like Cornelius had to, had to realize, you know, it didn't point to all the good things he did. He just said, what, what else, what do I need to do to be saved? And he said, you just put your faith in Jesus and you will be saved. I want you to know that can happen today. In just a moment, we're going to sing a song and there will be some prayer people here over to the sides. If you want to come and you just say, you know, you just need prayer or you want to give your life to Jesus, there will be people that are ready to pray with you. Or if you just want to come and talk to God and you just say, you know what, God, I need a fresh I need you to do something fresh in my life. I need you to, 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 to refill me with the Holy Spirit. God, I want to experience some revival in my life. Whatever it is, you just come and you can pray, and God will speak to you there. So, Father God, we just thank you for your word today. We thank you for what you're doing. God, we pray that you continue to move by your Spirit in our lives. God, change hearts. Forgive us of our pride. God, we humble ourselves before you today, and we ask, Holy Spirit, that you come and you do it again, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name.